Hey there YouTubers, it's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. This time we're going to talk about how to choose the right Ethernet cable for your installation. And this is something that throws a lot of people. They are wondering whether they should get indoor cable, outdoor cable, whether they need direct burial or not, uh, whether riser is important for their residents, and also what category, what category should they, should they buy depending on what they plan to run on their network. And also, maybe one of the biggest questions we get is, do I need shielded cable? Well, maybe, probably not, but maybe. Basically, the discussion involves three key things. Category, jacket type, and whether it's shielded or not. residential home network, I'm going to probably stress that category isn't as important as a lot of people make it out to be because most residential speeds are not above two and a half gigabit unless you're doing something special. And even a lowly Cat5e riser, for example, right here, handles two and a half gigabit networking speed. And it does it without shielding or anything like that. Now, category can start to become more important like when you're talking about higher bandwidths like five gigabit, 10 gigabit, things like that, in which case now you're talking about CAT6. CAT6, for example, and this is CAT6 riser, it's got slightly thicker conductors, it's got tighter twists, it's got a different design inside the cable. This particular cable carries five gigabit networking all the way out to the maximum distance that Ethernet can be run. But secondarily, you can also run it at 10 gigabit, you know, if it's just like one or two cables up to 165 feet, or if you've got a good sized bundle of them up to about 120 feet for, for 10 gigabit. Uh, although if you intend to run 10 gigabit networking from the get-go, then I would probably recommend you look at category 6A. Category 6A is yet a little bit thicker again. It's got alien crosstalk protection built into the cable jacket. And I mean, it looks very similar uh, to the CAT6. It's just that there's an additional thickness there that comes from the alien crosstalk protection to keep one cable from interfering with another. So category in a commercial business, that could start to become more important. I would recommend that new installations and businesses consider CAT6A as the, as the starting place. There's no real need for CAT8. I know that CAT8 is out there. CAT8 is ANSI TIA approved, but it, it's essentially a 10 gigabit cable as soon as you get past 98 feet. It's designed to carry up to 40 gigabit when you're talking about 98 feet or less. So it's used for like inside data centers and high speed backbone connections. And quite frankly, if you're going to be running 25 or 40 gigabit, you really should be thinking about fiber optic for that. It's going to be easier to work with. It's going to be more stable. When it comes to up to 10 gigabit, yes, then Ethernet cable, the solid copper stuff is, is what you should be looking at. If you're, all you're doing is running gigabit networking, any category is fine. Just pick the easiest one to work with. So CAT5e is good, CAT6 is good, CAT6a is good. When it comes to the second consideration, which is cable jacket, now we're starting to talk about stuff that may affect what, what you're doing in your individual installation. So if you're running just generally cabling inside your walls, like for example, on the wall behind me, you've got riser rated cable running up it. That basically would just call for riser rated cable. And riser rated cable has a mild fire retardance, but it's not absolutely flame resistant like plenum cable is. CAT6 riser is often the top choice for most residential installers and even some commercial still. It's inexpensive, easy to terminate, easy to work with. So the riser rated cable is for just generalized use. Never should be used outdoors. The next cable jacket type that you would consider, especially in residential situations, would be uh, outdoor style, which outdoor can come in direct burial, which just has waterproof tape or a gel filling, or it can also come in a style which is just simply an outdoor jacket. And what's interesting, for example, to kind of illustrate the difference here, is you got Cat6 riser and Cat6 outdoor, and they're exactly the same on the inside. It's just that they've got different cable jackets on the outside, depending on which one's going where. If you're going to pick outdoor cable, if you're going underground, you should be using direct burial. And that uses the same outer jacket as the outdoor cable, which is linear low density polyethylene or LLDPE. And that is the kind of cable that goes outside, period. 
Now, if you're going to go underground, then water blocking tape or gel filling are the top choices for going underground. For commercial spaces where, for example, you have a multi-story building and you've got air handling in between each floor. It could be right above us. Now, in our case, we don't have a plenum space above our drop ceiling, but you might. And if you are uncertain about that, you should find out, especially if you're installing commercially. Most of the time, if you're working to a contract, that decision's already made for you and the customer is already going to expect to pay the rather hefty premium for plenum rated cable. Plenum rated cable is designed to resist burning at all. Now, if it does start to burn in a spot, it has to be able to put out the fire by itself on five feet of either side of where the fire starts. If it does burn, it's designed to put off low toxicity smoke. So if you have a fire starting on the first floor, it doesn't end up poisoning the people with bad air on the eighth floor. So that is what plenum's for. It's, it's aimed at commercial use. I would argue that it probably has a residential use. If you're using your ductwork, like literally inside your ductwork to run ethernet cable, I don't recommend you do that because heat can start to become a problem for ethernet cable operation. Depends on how hot your ductwork gets. I'm gonna tell you just right off the bat, most of the time, the average installer does not need shielded cable. The reason why is because Ethernet cable already has built-in shielding in a way. You see these twisted pairs? They are electromagnetically balanced, and they do a pretty good job of canceling out interference on their own. Now, of course, there are situations where you may get enough interference in the environment that that could overcome that twist rate and cause problems on your communications cable, in which case you would want to opt for like an overall foil shield. It comes with a drain wire to drain up electrostatic discharge as well. Those situations involve running your ethernet too close to AC. Now for residential, voltage, residential voltages, it's not such a real problem. Most residential voltage is gonna be 240 volt or less. And so as long as you maintain just a few inches of separation with unshielded cable, you're gonna be okay. If you have to get like real close to your AC and it's unshielded AC like Romax, then yeah, you're gonna, start, you're gonna probably start wanting to think about shielded cable. My recommendation is try to just try to keep your distance from it. You're better off to keep your distance than you are to put in the shielded cable because shielded comes with penalties in terms of ease of termination, cost, weight, and uh, having to bond it to ground. And in the residence, how would you do that at the patch panel? Well, we've got an answer on that one, but uh, that's on another video. It's called True Plug. Shielded cable, is generally not needed and you shouldn't use it unless you know you need it. And if you do need it, great. Then we've got lots of cable that's shielded and hardware that's shielded that'll help you uh, get done what you need to get done. So that's pretty much the three main things you need to take into consideration. Category and the jacket type and whether it needs to be shielded or not. We do have a ethernet cable finder on our website at www.truecable.com and it will take you through a guided question and answer session asking you about what you're doing. And then it will actually suggest the cable uh, that would most apply to your situation. And maybe this video will give you some insight too. So with that, I'm gonna say you have a great day and happy networking.